Coming up on iOS today, Rosemary Orchard and I walk you through some of the new features on iOS 14.5, including unlocking your phone while wearing a mask with Face ID. It's all that and so much more on iOS today. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment. Delve into your next title on Audible with Audible Plus. New members can try Audible Plus for 30 days. Download the Audible app and get started with a free trial at audible.com slash iOS today or text iOS today to 500 500. And by Headspace. Devoting just a few minutes per day to focus on your thoughts can change your life. Headspace is the easy to use app that can help you sleep, focus, act, and just be better. Go to headspace.com slash iOS today for a free one month trial. Hello and welcome to iOS Today, the show where we talk all things iOS, tvOS, watchOS, iPadOS, and HomePodOS, and all the OSs that Apple has on offer. I am one of your hosts, Micah Sargent. And I'm the other host, Rosemary Orchard. Hello, Rosemary. How are you today? Oh, I'm good. Uh, I, I have Micah. I have something special that we're going to show on the, a little bit later. Look, look at that. That's that's a box with some washi on it and some some, you know, rollers to very type smart. my address. Uh, but yeah, yeah. yeah the other inside inside there's some things, and then also Apple sent me a lovely padded envelope. Only it's better than a padded cell because like I got all the shiny things. Ooh. So uh, we've got air tags. Yes, new and exciting. I have uh, FedEx and UPS both uh, w- delivering to my address because some of the stuff came. Some of the the like holders for the tags have co- are coming yeah. uh, via one, and then the tags themselves are coming via another. So uh, yeah. I'll be taking a look at that a little later today. Uh, but uh, it's really nice that uh, Rosemary, you're over in the UK, so that way uh, it seems that you will have the things as soon as they're uh, available on the day that they're available. Well, you say that, Micah, but there might have been a little bit of trouble with the App Store this morning, as I'm sure anybody else who might have been trying to pre-order oh. an iPad is aware. Micah and I were messaging each other like when it was supposed to go live, and stuff just wasn't staying in my basket. I don't know what happened for you, Micah, but I got stuck on a payment pending screen for five minutes. It just locked up on me, and nothing nothing did anything. And so my iMac is now not coming until June 1st at the oh, earliest, no! apparently. So that breaks so my heart. Oh, and it's purple and I, man, I want my purple iMac. Um, but um, the, I, unfortunately, I did have to use the website because uh, I'm making the most of my educational discount while I still have it. Um, and you don't get educational discount on the app, which is a real shame. Something people should be aware of though, because the education discount's well worth it if you can if you can make use of that. Um, yes, but, uh, if people yeah, are, are so. kind of wondering what what uh, is happening here. So last week, Apple uh, opened up pre-orders for the AirTag devices um, and the iPhone in purple. And this week, uh, as of Friday, for, for me, Friday morning, uh, it was 5 a.m., uh, pre-orders for the iPad Pro, the new iMacs, the Apple TV, and the uh, Siri remote for the Apple TV. So here's the thing. This is what's interesting to me is that in all of the events, all of the pre-order days past, Apple takes down the site temporarily to get everything ready. And then inevitably people complain, uh, why do they feel like they have to take down the site? Why does it, you know, how have they not worked this out after so long? Why do they need to keep taking down the site? Well, without any of us knowing, they decided not to take down the site this morning. And so I kid you not, I, I set my alarms for, uh, slept on the couch so that I wouldn't wake up my partner, uh, 4.55, 4.58 a.m. Um, my alarms went off and I uh, look at the app and it's just, I'm just able to be in the Apple store. I'm like scrolling through the Apple store mm-hmm. going, 
wait, I, okay, so it's working. Does that, did I get the pre-order dates wrong? So I'm like looking on nine to five Mac. I'm looking at Twitter. Nobody's saying anything on Twitter. I uh, hop over to Apple's page to see if there's anything going on there. And I'm like, did I get the date wrong? I go yeah. to uh, Apple's newsroom page and it and it's, talks about the, you know, the pre-orders opening up, but it's all the way at the bottom where you find what date it is. It says April 30th. And I'm like, okay, April 30th. And they've always done it. Uh, they have done it uh, in the past at 5 a.m. Pacific. So yep. surely that's this time. And it wasn't happening. I kept going to the Apple store and trying to add the iPad Pro to my cart. It wouldn't add. It just didn't have an add to bag. Like the add to bag button was grayed out. And yeah, so yeah. I'm going, it, is there something wrong in my brain? Am I reading that it's April 30th? But it's not April. I mean, I was being gaslit by, by the Apple Store app to the point that I was questioning what I was getting wrong, what I wasn't understanding. And I'm like doing the math going, okay, but 5 a.m. on April, this should, right? And so yeah. finally... I popped open the Apple Store app. I was able to add the iPad Pro to my cart. I went to check out and it uh, you know, returned an error. And so then I tried it one more time and it actually let me through when I was able to order the iPad Pro. Um, and then I went back and it was showing everything is unavailable again, not ready to be pre-ordered. Mm. And so I thought... The, everybody must be having issues and that's why nobody's tweeting about it yet and why because usually if you're up at that time or if it's later in the day for some folks then you will see the people going oh I got my da 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 and I got my da 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 and uh, everything's good to go but yeah this morning because I didn't take down the site I was very confused and uh, wondering if I was doing everything right but um, I was able to order a this is weird I'm getting a 12.9 inch iPad Pro um, I got the one terabyte version so that I could have the, the larger amount of RAM to go with it. And then I did place an order for the new magic keyboard, uh, that fits it better. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I personally ordered, uh, cause you know, that part is certainly part of my job, but, uh, personally I ordered, and I'll be talking about that as well, a Siri remote. I did not order the new Apple TV, um, I, I will probably get one later, but it's, it wasn't a rush item for me. So I just ordered the Siri remote. Um, interestingly, the new Magic Keyboard will ship uh, or will uh, is supposed to arrive on May 5th. So I'm going to have to wait yep. uh, from May 5th all the way till May 20th uh, to finally get to... It, it'll just be sitting there in the box waiting for the iPad Pro to pair with it. Um, yep. So what all did you yeah. end up ordering this morning? Well, this morning, uh, so I, I had to do a little bit of thinking because A, I was going through the education discount website, which over here is a, a thing called Uni Days. And I thought that that was going to take forever because often the like forwarding takes a while. That turned out not to be the problem. Um, and so I decided that it was most likely that the iPad was going to go first versus the iMac. Um, and so I added that one to my cart and it just kept doing that thing where it's like, I added it to your cart. Click to review your bag. I click review my bag and it says, we've updated your your the contents of your bag to reflect current availability, followed by an empty bag. And at one point I managed to add the iPad and the Magic Keyboard and I went to review my bag and then I only had a Magic Keyboard and that was going to arrive on <laughs> May 5th. And I thought, I don't want the Magic Keyboard to arrive on May 5th because then, uh, so for people who aren't familiar, there's a, usually a two-week return window with Apple um, for, for things. Now this extends over holiday periods like Christmas and so on. But if I have, you know, if I have say a Magic Keyboard arrive on May 5th and then the iPad Pro arrives on May 21st, then that's most of my return period already absorbed by me waiting for the device that it is compatible with. Um, now, a little bit of a note about the Magic Keyboard. Um, we know that the previous versions of the 11-inch Magic Keyboard are compatible with the new iPad Pros. Um, and Apple has said that the uh, the old Magic Keyboard for the 12.9-inch might be compatible. So it, it, tend, it works. Like, there's nothing stopping it working, but it might not close quite as securely. So I made sure to get the new Magic Keyboard there. Um, and that I had to place, at, well, I've got to place that order um, because... Otherwise, it's going to be here too early. And then I finally got a purple iMac. Like a purple. You got purple. purple why? Why? IMac. Why does the iPad Pro not come in purple? Come on. You could have green. I could have purple. It would be so much fun. It would be so much fun. They should. They should give you that. 
Um, I am looking for, are you planning on adding those uh, D brand stickers to the front to make the bezel black instead of white? No, I don't think so. Uh, I, you know, I'm quite, <laughs> quite happy. It's, it's actually not white. It's like a light gray uh, by the looks of things. Ah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to wait and see what it's like. I've, I've never really been one for putting D brand stickers on my devices. That may change with the air tags because they, they seem to be quite easy to scratch. So we'll see. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm definitely, you, you, what color magic keyboard did you get, Micah? Did you get black or white? Uh, I definitely got black. I, I, <laughs> I type on that thing way too much to want to get the white one and have fingerprints and grossness all over it. So I definitely went for the black one, just classic black. Yeah. Okay. Um, we got the the pre-order stuff out of the way. It's exciting to talk about. Um, let's get into iOS 14.5 and uh, some of the new features. I think the biggest one that we want to talk about today, one that is... Uh, I, I have received more uh, personal texts, um, not personal emails, um, tweets, and all sorts of, um, I've not been accosted on the street about it, but uh, everything else besides <laughs> that, uh, asking, how do I turn on unlock with, unlock using, it's such a it's such a hard thing to say, unlock your iPhone with Apple Watch using Face ID while you're wearing a mask. <laughs> so let's just start with this. It used to be the case that if you were wearing a mask and you lifted up your phone to do face ID, then the phone would just say, eh, you know, I, I can't recognize that it's you. I don't want to just use your eyes as a way to unlock the phone. And you just had to type in your password. Now at the beginning, it would sort of error three or four times. I can't remember how many, um, three or four times before it finally would pop up and say, okay, type in your password before it prompt you for your password. Then Apple updated iOS so that it would not, uh, if it recognized that you were wearing a face mask, then it would just immediately prompt you for your password instead of having to wait for those errors to go through first, which was very good. But some of us, like myself, have very long, safe passwords. And so... Uh, typing in a password is still a really long, it takes a really long time. Uh, Apple then said, okay, here's what we're going to do. Um, because I know a number of people who were upset that, uh, you know, they'd have customers come in and it came time to pay or something like that. And they would take off their mask for a second, look at their phone, they'd put the mask back on. It's like, you're completely defeating the purpose of wearing the mask. And so mm -hmm. finally, we have uh, available to everybody the ability to unlock your phone if you have an Apple Watch using Face ID and the Apple Watch unlock. So Rosemary Orchard, given that I've been asked this question so many times, how in the world do people set up this feature? How do they turn this on? Well, step one, go buy a mask, get a nice comfy one because you should be wearing it a little of the time right now. Step two, in your iPhone and iOS 14.5, make sure your iPhone is up to date. You can do that in general and then software update. It will check for updates and it should then say you're up to date. As you can see, I've got a developer beta to install, but that's a story for another day. So then once you've made sure you're running iOS 14.5, that is a requirement. Gives you 10 new emojis and unlock with your mask on. Uh, you can scroll down to face ID and passcode. Then you need to enter your passcode, which I'll just do quickly here. And then we have a few options. Okay. So you can use face ID to unlock your iPhone and all of these things. And then if you scroll down a bit further, there is unlock with Apple watch, and then you can toggle this on and off. So that, you know, when, when your iPhone is locked, then you can actually unlock it using this. So I'm going to lock my iPhone, which you don't see on the screen, but now I'm going to go and unlock it. And that that worked because I don't have my mask on. Okay. Um, and I don't actually have a mask with me, but I'm just going to put my hand in front or between my phone and the camera and it's worked. And I've just felt a buzz here and I'm going to see if I can uh, show this on camera. This is a little bit difficult to uh, show people. No, that's, that's gone away, unfortunately. Um, but uh, it pops up a little notification on your, your watch to say that it's unlocked your iPhone. And if you don't want your iPhone unlocked, then you can tap a button that says lock iPhone. And it appears right there, which is great. So, you know, if somebody else does pick it up, it is trying to recognize the top half of your face, but obviously it's 
you know, this this here is quite a limited area for it to match, especially if like me, you've got a fringe or bangs uh, for, for the Americans. Um, <laughs> so uh, you, you need to make sure you have a passcode set up on your Apple Watch. If you don't have a passcode set up on your Apple Watch, you're missing out on a couple of cool things like paying with your Apple Watch with Apple Pay. And for that, you don't need Face ID. You can just double press the side and, you know, your credit card pops up. You're ready to go. Uh, so make sure you've got your passcode enabled on your Apple Watch. And then this feature will be available to you. It's easy and it works 10 out of 10 times. I, I do not have a problem with it at all. I'm really pleased with it. Agreed. Um, I have been able to use it nonstop. Um, uh, and once people have gotten this feature set up, they <laughs> universally have been very pumped about it. Uh, and, you know, oh, yeah. oh, finally, this is so good. So I'm very happy about it. Um, it seems to work quite well. And uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, you, the one thing that everybody needs to know, uh, and Apple includes this in their support documentation, is this is strictly for unlocking your iPhone. It is not an Apple Pay authentication method. Uh, it is not a way to unlock apps that use Face ID or anything else. It is just for unlocking your iPhone. Um, when you get the prompt on your watch that says, hey, uh, your, app, your watch was just used to unlock your iPhone, uh, choosing to then lock your iPhone because there's there's a little prompt the prompt button says you know let you lock it again and at that point you would have to type in your password in order to unlock the the device so that is in the situation where somebody else unlocks your phone somehow and you get that notification you're like uh, my phone should not be unlocked you can immediately get it locked and they won't be able to do it right away again by just face iding with it so there are some protections in place that i think are really good uh for apple to to use for this um but yeah i think it's important to know that you know you've got to to turn on the features with the apple watch and with the iphone um and then you can go through that process. But once you've got that, you're good to go. And uh, you can unlock your your Apple Watch. Or, I mean, excuse me, your iPhone. Super great. Yeah. Though speaking of unlocking your Apple Watch, there is also another feature with regards to the Apple Watch and unlocking. So I've just taken my Apple Watch off. Um, and when you take your Apple Watch off, it should automatically relock it if you have a, a passcode enabled on your Apple Watch. So now if I look at my Apple Watch and I try and do something, it's going to ask me for my passcode. Um, but there is a new feature in iOS, which when I unlock it, it says right there at the top, oh, you're not seeing it. It's not on the screen. There we go. Uh, the, it unlocked my iPhone. So I'm just going to do that again for people uh, because my iPhone was not showing on screen. Um, so anybody who wants to see it. So my Apple Watch is off. I'll put it back on and now I unlock and it uh, briefly appeared and showed it. Unfortunately, <laughs> it's now disappeared again, which is really annoying. It's a very brief notification. If you swipe yes. um, as it does it, then it disappears. But you get a notification now when your phone unlocks your Apple Watch, which is something if you don't have that set up already. I realized today my dad did not have this feature enabled. You can have your phone your phone automatically unlock your Apple Watch when your Apple Watch is on your wrist and you unlock your phone for the first time afterwards. Uh, so that is a great feature. Turn it on and then you get this little notification now letting you know. Yep. Um, all right. The next one <clears throat> is arguably one of the most important features uh, that that Apple has released, but it is one that is not as glamorous as the watch and lock with mask. And this is app tracking transparency, ATT, not ATNT, but ATT. Uh, app tracking transparency is a feature that it, it, you turn it on, and by turning it on, you say, um, hey, apps, you need to ask the user if you want to use tracking within the app. So third-party tracking uh, within the app. And this is going to be different for different uh, apps and different services. But the idea here is that you have more control over what apps are allowed to track and how they're allowed to track. Now, the important thing to note here is that apps that are anything you do within an app it is that app makers 
um, you know, I, I don't know, I don't want to call it right necessarily, but it is within the capability and within the bounds of the app developer to know what you're doing within that app. Uh, but this is about using that information and tracking you across other things. So we call that first party, which is, you know, what you're doing within the app versus third party, which is you, uh, what you do in other places and linking it to what you do in the app. So the important thing to understand about this feature is that it's a little confusing, uh, the wording of it. Um, we'll launch settings. We will scroll down until we get to privacy. And then right at the top, you can see location services and tracking. We want to go into tracking. And you'll see that there's a, a toggle at the top that, say, a lot, that says, allow apps to request to track. And you can see some apps that have asked me already, including Cardiogram, headphones, Venmo, and Wildscapes. Now, you'll notice that I have the toggle turned off. And this is where it gets confusing because originally I thought, and uh, I've, I've seen some other people make this mistake um, because it is confusing, allow apps to request to track. It sounds like if you turn that off, then they don't have to ask, they can just do it. But instead, when you turn this off, you're saying they don't get to ask me, they don't get to do it. So it is a feature where it's it's basically, it's an opt-in by default uh, feature as opposed to an opt-out by default. Meaning that if I don't allow them to ask, then they're not going to be tracking me. It's only if I turn that on and say yes or no that I can choose, okay, I'll let this app track me. I won't let this app track me. So if you are privacy focused, the most privacy uh, focused way to do this is by turning this feature off, by turning off allow apps to request to track. But if you uh, can see the benefit of allowing an app to track you, and that's something that you want to do, then you toggle it on, and then you can do it on an individual basis to say, yes, I'll let you do it. No, I won't. So universal no is turning it off and a case-by-case uh, -case basis is turning it on. So just keep that in mind. And again, uh, just to show everybody, you launch settings, you scroll down until you get to the privacy, that's one hand, and you choose tracking, and then you turn off allow apps to request to track. Uh, Rosemary, have you? do you have any apps in your list? Because I've seen uh, quite a few screenshots of this page and people have not had any apps asking them for uh, the ability to yeah, track. Yeah, so so I, I had a look before the show and uh, let me just uh, pop this up on my screen. I have no apps here. No apps have requested to track me. Um, but I've had this feature turned off since very early beta. Um, so, uh, you know, that's maybe a good thing with the apps that I'm yeah. using. They're all privacy and security focused, um, and they're not doing that. That said, I do have the Facebook app installed. I, I briefly installed it the other day. I needed to wrangle some stuff on Facebook marketplace and it's much easier if you've got it on your phone. Um, so I did that and, uh, yeah, it didn't pop up here. So I think we're going to have to, uh, wait and see what happens here as of course updates come out because Apple has made some further requirements of developers, uh, with iOS 14.5. So updates that are, that come out uh, from now on, uh, have more stringent requirements than they did previously with that nutrition label for, uh, privacy and security purposes. So, uh, we're going to have to see what happens. Yes. And that's that's one of the important things is that this is a gradual rollout. And so folks might not have this right away. Um, and some of the apps themselves will not have this right away. Uh, so the app has to update, uh, including Facebook, which is kind of the big one. Um, it In an upcoming update, if it wants to stay in the app store, then it will need to add this. And it's the same thing, like you said, with the... Um, privacy, nutrition labels, so to speak, uh, you, there was a grace period. And then at this point, you know, to do a new update in the app store, you needed to add it. So the same thing will hap here, happen here and uh, we'll let them then ask to, to track or not track. Um, yeah, so that covers that one. Let's talk about Apple Maps because I am loving Apple Maps uh, in its new its new form with some of the new features that are available. I haven't used it a lot because I don't go a lot of places uh, right now, but 
I have always enjoyed my my GPS. And so uh, these these new features that are available, I think, really make Apple Maps. Um, it brings it right up there with some of the other third-party apps that folks like to use, and uh, especially whenever it's uh, competing against Google Maps. Yeah. So uh, Apple Maps has added uh, two new features. Um, and uh, the first one is it's now called crowdsourcing for accidents, uh, hazards, and speed checks, um, which means that you can go in, and this is specifically for people in the US and China. So I can't demo this. Um, and I also couldn't demo it without showing you exactly where I am. Um, so, uh, but um, uh, but it basically allows you to say, hey, I, I found an accident here, or there, you know, there was a, a road accident, or there's there's something going on. Um, there's a speed check, for example, and therefore that information is then transmitted back to Apple. Um, and you specify if it's an accident, a hazard, or a speed check specifically. Um, and then uh, that's sent back to Apple. And other people who've reported that same thing, you know, if, if just one person reports something, then it's, it's not going to pop up because... One person. Well, let's be honest. Kids play pranks, um, and so on. So you know, you you you've got to you've got to have a little bit of awareness of how these things work. And please don't report things that don't actually exist. Like don't don't report like a six car pile up outside your house because you're testing the feature that that won't do any good um, for anybody. Um, but uh, you know, you can report it, um, and then uh, when when people pass it, they'll be asked if it's still here or if it's now cleared, um, and things like that. If it's an accident, I believe it's got different words precisely for uh for uh different things other than accidents um but it's i i really like this feature because i have previously reported things on google maps um because i i could and i was using google maps at the time um because it did work better but i found apple maps over the last year or so has really improved massively for me so i've i've really been enjoying using it but i have been missing out on these accident reports and so on Fortunately, uh, over the last year, there have been considerably fewer road accidents and other things, which has, <laughs> you know, helped helped balance out the fact that I've been using Apple Maps for that long. Um, so uh, I'm really pleased that this now exists because it means that you can submit your own report that something's up, um, and then you know, uh, so other people submitting the same sort of report will essentially verify that. Um, and then other people can mark it as cleared later and it can allow people to, to reroute if necessary so that they won't travel down that same stretch of road that's already backed up. Um, and, you know, I think that's that's a great thing. Agreed. Uh, I, I like the... So in the past, the routing features included a way to, while you were driving, you could say, oh, I want to go to the gas station or something like that. And then it would uh, kind of route you to the gas station. You could do that. And then you could leave again and get back on your route. But it wasn't as uh, robust a way to kind of plan pre-plan your event uh, where you could say, um, this is where I am. This is my destination. On the way, I want to stop here. I want to stop here. I want to stop here and then get to my destination. And the updates to Apple Maps that have added that to make it kind of a built in from the get go um, map route are really handy because that's something I haven't seen in mapping apps um, done well since. I used an actual GPS, like one of those that you used to buy at the store where you would have to every once in a while stick an SD card in it and update the mapping uh, system mm -hmm. inside of it. And, it, you know, you'd have it on your dashboard. I I did, I was, I, I'm notoriously, I have a poor sense of direction. And so I used to drive between, um, in Missouri, uh, sort of mid-Missouri to uh, northwestern Missouri. And there were two routes to take. There was a more direct route that uh, involved a lot of stress because it was there was a busy highway that I would always end up on, or there was a way where I could sort of go north first and then go west from from there, as opposed to just going straight northwest. And I can remember using my GPS to say I want to go here via. And then you would type in the city that was the via point. And so then I could figure out how to get to that city and then uh, go over from there. And then after that GPS kind of died and you know you used your, your phones a lot more often, I just would type in the city that I would always take and then type in the address once I got to that city to get where I was going. And yes, I was that bad at directions that I it took me a long time to just be able to 
uh, do that without needing the GPS. I, I, yeah, it was bad. But um, I like now these kind of built-in routes. So I could say, yeah, I want to visit this, uh, especially if you're taking, you know, maybe a long road trip, you're like, oh, I want to see this site and this site before I get to my eventual place, which is here. Uh, all of that, I think, is very good. Yeah. yeah. And I have to say, Micah, there's a, there's a lot of things going for just using a GPS all the time. It can do things like keep you aware of speed limits um, and so on, especially over here in the UK, we have variable speed limits on some roads. And I've noticed over time, uh, things things have been getting better at uh, being aware of set variable speed limits. So um, I believe Apple Maps actually a couple of weeks ago I was driving down a motorway and they the the speed limit was lowered um, for for some reason I think it was because of the rain um, and uh, it seemed to me uh, maybe maybe that was just coincidence or good luck that the speed limit had been correctly adjusted. Um, nice. And uh, you know the and the other thing is is if you get if you come across a road closure. Um, and you have to take a diversion. I don't know about over in the US, but I know over here, it feels like diversion signs are never where I actually need them. And so yes, I'm there and I just keep driving way... in a straight line yep. and it, I'm there going, am I still on the right route? You know, it does. I don't know. Um, and so having a sat nav that's like, yeah, okay. So you've taken what I would consider to be a wrong turn. Uh, here's how <laughs> you would get back to that route. Um, and uh, th that's actually pretty darn useful. So I, I personally am a big fan. I just... I always set up the map uh, because it also gives me an ETA feature, which yep. leads us to the next update um, for, for Apple Maps, which is now you can get an ETA for walking and cycling directions. So previously you could only share an ETA if you were driving um, or um, I believe maybe taking public transit as well. Um, but now um, you can also share your estimated time of arrival with people with walking and cycling directions. And this is a great feature because it means that you can save the environment and still let people know where you are and you know and and when you're going to get there. Um, and I, I, I love the share ETA feature. I don't know about oh you, Mike. God, I feel same. like I'm using it all the time um yep. like uh, and and also it, you you start typing in messages my eta it will auto complete it auto completes I like that's that. a suggestion that pops up it just yep. like you start typing my eta and it suggests it is 26 minutes or whatever <laughs> the correct time is and it's Genius. Share I my ETA it. is one of the best features that Apple has ever added, I think, to, to iOS in general. It is uh, one that uh, I have always found useful in um, letting folks know where I am, how long I'm going to get, how long it's going to take me to get there. If you use the one that's built into Apple Maps, then it will actually update the people who are following along with you if things change. So uh, Matthew Casanelli, whenever we were talking a little bit about this, brought up... Uh, I, before we had set up Smart Tech Today, I wanted to meet with him to talk about the idea and what we would do and things like that. So I went to uh, to meet him in, in, I can't remember, Berkeley. And uh, the traffic, of course, got in the way at one point and he was updated to know, okay, he's, you know, this is how long it's going to take him to get here. Uh, he had to take a different route. And my partner and I use it all the time just because it was mostly for me because I'm, uh, I'm just a... I'm a bit of an anxious person when it comes to people being on the road and I'm not there with them. I'm always like, well, I haven't heard from them for four hours. So are they in a ditch? And so the ETA feature is very helpful to go. Uh, no, they're still, you know, traveling along that route. And uh, maybe there was, you know, some traffic and you, then you get notified. It says, oh, this person is updated. Uh, they will get here at this time instead. So I think that feature is fantastic. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, it has helped folks, you know, come across a flat tire or some other thing um, to be able to have their family or friends or whomever uh, know, okay, everything's okay. They just uh, had a stop along the road. So yeah, I think it's a great feature. Um, we've got a lot more to talk about with iOS 14.5, but I do want to take a quick break so I can tell you, very excited that Audible is back with us here on Twit. And they're bringing you today's episode of iOS Today. Have you ever wanted to read a memoir and you just didn't have the time? Or maybe you found a title you couldn't put down, but you kind of needed to put down because you needed to fold the laundry. Well, now you can do both because Audible makes it possible. Ah, uh, yes, Audible. I My life is filled with Audible. When I am not using my ears for things that require my 
ear focus. Uh, it is filled with the joy and wonder that is audible. Uh, it, it is, it's, it's, I feel the best way to spend my time. Uh, when you're driving, when you're cooking, when you're cleaning your house, or if you're just relaxing, you can listen to amazing audio files with Audible. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment all in one place. At Audible, you can find the largest selection of audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, languages, business, motivation, and more. Get original entertainment from top celebrity creators and thousands of popular and binge-worthy podcasts. They are now offering their newest plan, Audible Plus. Audible Plus gives you full access to their popular Plus catalog. Audible Plus is all about giving members a chance to listen to and discover new favorites and explore different formats like the exclusive Words Plus Music series or a podcast you never considered before. And folks, they even have theatrical performances. You can listen all you want to thousands and thousands of popular audiobooks, original entertainment, and podcasts, including ad-free versions of your favorite shows and exclusive series. They're all available to download or stream, so you can listen anywhere, anytime, on any device, and you'll never lose your spot. To use your Audible membership, you'll need to download the Audible app. It's a completely free app and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. I've decided that Audible is like giving yourself, gifting yourself, granting yourself a superpower. Because all of this time that could be spent in silence or in not learning or enjoying, experiencing, adventuring, I get to spend doing all of those things because I can just pipe in the sound and listen to an audiobook, uh, be it fiction or nonfiction. Personally, if you looked at my Audible library, I might be a little embarrassed because it is chock full of uh, fantasy audiobooks. And there are all sorts of titles. But the, the one that I want to talk about today is uh, a series of audiobooks from, um, I believe it's the, the author is Brandon Sanderson, and the audiobook series is The Mistborn Chronicles um, or The Mistborn series. And these audiobooks are truly fantastic if you like world building, if you like, uh, magic that kind of has a rules system. If you like uh, twists and turns and all sorts of, uh, of of plots, it's kind of incredible. And uh, Brandon Sanderson also has some other audiobooks in uh, the lineup that are, uh, it's called the Stormlight Archive. And I recently listened to those as well. Also very good. Uh, but certainly Mistborn is my favorite series. And so anybody who is into fantasy would be remiss to not check out that series because they are just incredible. But again, it's not just, uh, it's not just fiction. It's, it's also nonfiction and you can, you can learn some new things and do it at a time when you would normally be washing the dishes or, or cleaning the house or what have you. And that's one of the things I think makes Audible so amazing. Listening to Audible will make you feel inspired, connected, and it's available all in one app. Audible Plus is your playlist for life. So what are you waiting for? Delve into your next title on Audible with Audible Plus. New members can try Audible Plus for 30 days. Download the Audible app and get started with a free trial at audible.com slash iOS today, or we've got a short code for you. Text iOS today to 500, 500. That's A-U-D-I-B-L-E dot com slash iOS today, or text iOS today to 500, 500 to start your free trial today. Thanks so much to Audible for sponsoring this week's episode of iOS today and for filling my life with joy, happiness, learning, knowledge, discovery, action, adventure, and all of the other things. Thank you, Audible. We appreciate it. Uh, we were talking before, Rosemary, about uh, maps and and you know ETA and things like that. And I think one of the most fun parts of the maps updates is not actually a maps update. It's an update to Siri, which includes a couple of new voices that feel and sound more natural than the voices mm -hmm. of Siri past. And Listening to that voice uh, give me directions is honestly such a joy, such a pleasure. And also, mm -hmm. 
in the past, I've had um, the feature where if you're wearing AirPods, it will uh, announce and read out your messages to you. I've had that feature turned off uh, because I didn't mm-hmm. want it to interrupt me. But with the new voices, I wanted to see how you know that worked. And so I turned it back on. And I was really impressed with how uh, the, the, the new Siri voice kind of parsed what was being said and added emphasis in the right places. It just, it feels, it sounds so much more natural. I've really enjoyed the new Siri voices. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I briefly switched my Siri to American to, to try out those new voices and I do really like them. Uh, I, I did switch back to British, um, because I, I like pretending that Siri totally is my called Jeeves. Um, <laughs> and, uh, everybody should have their own personal butler, uh, at least a virtual assistant butler. Um, so, uh, so, so yes, I, I, I prefer Jeeves overall. Um, but, um, I do really love these voices. Um, they are great. And honestly, it's just great to have a bit more variety. I also appreciate the fact that they they've stopped naming them male and female and now there's just Siri voice one two three and four um and i believe uh, numbers two and three are the new ones uh you'll have to correct me if i'm wrong there micah um but they're they're really nice uh so i would yeah. highly recommend people go in and give them a go um it's 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 a little difficult to uh, demo Siri speaking here on the podcast at least for me i don't have a way to redirect my audio from my phone into into uh the system um, but it's something that you should play with and try out. And uh, don't forget, you can always use shortcuts followed by the speak text. Act, so a text action followed by speak text to uh, try out different voices. Yeah. So I w- if you are curious how to set up this feature yourself, if you want to try some of these new voices, um, it's a very simple thing. Uh, we just go into, let me uh, po- pop open my iPhone here. We go into the settings app and then you scroll down until you get to Siri and search. And then you choose Siri voice and you will need uh, under variety to choose American. And then under voices, uh, you've got voice one, which uh, unfortunately is not downloaded. So you won't be able to, it's downloading right now for you to hear it. So that's one of the other things. You don't want to do this while you're connected to, um, to your LTE unless you can, you know, to your cellular network, unless you've got the space. Uh, But then you should be able to Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, you can I'm change Siri. it later in Choose settings. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. You can change it later in settings. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. You can change it later in settings. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. You can change it later in settings. So as you can hear, voices two and three are the two voices that have uh, that are that are new, and so I have voice two uh, turned on. I don't know if any of you have ever uh, watched. Maybe many of you have watched um, uh, Grey's Anatomy, but the uh, if you haven't, there's a character named Maggie on Grey's Anatomy, and voice two sounds so much like Maggie and. Maggie is one of my favorite characters on that show. And so it brings me so much joy to hear Maggie uh, whenever my text messages are being read. Uh, so I definitely chose voice two as my Siri voice. But yes, you uh, under variety choose American and then under voice two and three are the two new voices that you can check out uh, that are part of iOS 14.5. All right. What's next here on the, the list? Looks well, like we've got uh, Fitness Plus is before. actually had a little update. Uh, so to start with, with Fitness Plus, you couldn't airplay Fitness Plus videos. Um, so you had to start them on whatever the device was that you wanted to watch them from. And from my understanding, this caused some problems with people with AirPlay compatible TVs that didn't, uh, you know, they they didn't own an Apple TV. Um, so I, my, my, my TV is ancient and incredibly dumb. So I have to use the Apple TV to make it smart. So that for me wasn't a problem, but AirPlay 2 has now come to Fitness Plus, which means that you can indeed AirPlay videos from, say, your iPhone or your iPad to uh, a a regular TV with AirPlay built in or another AirPlay device so that you can then either watch it on a larger screen or just listen to it on, on, say, better speakers, Um, which I think is an excellent update. It's, it's, it's a seemingly small thing, um, but for those people who, who were limited to being able to do fitness plus videos on their iPhone, because that was the only 
iOS device they owned um, and then they couldn't airplay it on their AirPlay TV. Uh, this this was very annoying, I'm sure. So I'm really glad to see that that's come along. Samesies. Um, and then there's one that gets everybody to update no matter who you are uh, and how much you deny it. We know you've updated your phone so you can take advantage of the new emoji. Uh, cue the sound of like, at least 10 emails to me going, I don't care about emoji. How dare you say that's why I updated. Uh, but there are new emoji in iOS 14.5 and uh, Emojipedia has the list of new emojis that are emoji. I like to, the plural and singular of emoji are the same in my mind um, yes. that you can check out. Yeah, and I like this. So uh, there, there's a couple of you know brand new emojis. So so there's a face breathing steam. Um, there's there's a heart on fire. There's also a bandaged heart, uh, a dizzy person, uh, somebody with a, that's uh, somebody with spir- spiraling eyes, um, and uh, somebody exhaling. Um, but there's also just some some gender consistency updates as well. Uh, so there's options for. Uh, um, a, a female icon with a beard or um, a, a men with beards as well. Um, so, uh, you know, that that's good. Um, Apple has made one little change here actually with the syringe icon. So this isn't a new emoji. It's just gone from having blood on it to uh, to having like a clear liquid inside. So this is a, a little more versatile, let's say, um, and no longer strictly applicable to uh, blood tests or, uh, you know, donating blood, uh, which of course, you know, is, is, is a useful emoji to have. But I think in the current climate, updating it to be a little more COVID-19 relevant uh, has made yes. a lot of sense. Yes. Yes. They, they now also, I can show my vaccine with that, with the uh, syringe. Yeah. Yes. Well, I've yet to get mine. I'm crossing my fingers it'll be soon. But Apple, of course, couldn't resist the opportunity. Emoji updates. They changed <laughs> headphones to AirPods Max. Of course they did. Of course they did. Thank you, yeah. Apple. Um, everybody needs the to know that the big headphones Apple are really watch. AirPods Max. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the desktop is, is an iMac. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the keyboard is a magic keyboard. It's all of these things. It's not even a, a purple magic keyboard. Come on, Apple. Yeah, the, the mobile <laughs> phone is the iPhone. phone. Laptop is a MacBook Pro. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, so all of, all of the Apple-ification possible right there. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess they had to do something. So uh, Can you go you back know. to the, the section labeled smileys, Anthony? So in the section labeled smileys, you've got uh, three, I believe it is. There's the dizzy eyes, there's the um, the person with steam around them, and then there's the person breathing out. And, uh, you know, it's worth noting that here in California, this thing is legal. Uh, when I first saw these emojis, I thought anybody who uh, uses cannabis surely is going to take advantage of all three of these emoji as a way to communicate with their friends who also use cannabis. Because to <laughs> me, that last one looks like a cloud of smoke. The first one looks uh-huh. like someone breathing out a cloud of smoke. And the second one, I, I don't know, may, maybe if it may, I guess maybe that's more of an alcohol thing to make you dizzy, but still they just look <laughs> like uh, they should have come out on April 20th. Uh, they seem. I mean, let's be honest, Micah. Craig Federighi's jokes uh, when they're talking about how did we name the latest version of Mac OS? Well, there was Sierra, so we went hi, Sierra. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, you know, it, it's always it's always interesting uh, seeing what he comes up with. I'm going to be looking forward to that at WWDC. That I have to say, it's one of my favorite segments. Hearing how they've named the latest Mac OS. I know we're iOS yeah. today, but uh, I, I have a soft spot for Mac OS as well. Same. I'm working on it right now. <laughs> um, this next one, a bit controversial, uh, depending on who you talk to. Um, and it is a feature that folks have wanted for a long time, but when it was first uh, recognized, discovered in the beta, uh, Apple kind of responded saying, no, no, you're calling it this, but it's not this. It isn't a way to uh, change the the default music system, the default music playback on your iOS device. Instead, it is the preferred music playback with Siri. So what is new here and uh, what kind of uh, has changed in terms of of Siri? So 
So this is all about, um, you know, the fact that we have some defaults and some not defaults. So basically now, if you've only just updated to iOS 14.5, you're going to see this. But when you ask your your iPhone or your iPad to play something, it's going to ask you what your preferred source is. So I'm going to try and show this here. It's going to be a little tricky uh, to show it because uh, I, uh, I've, of course, already used iOS 14.5 since the early beta. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to clear... Why do I have 8,001 notifications while I'm in Do Not Disturb? <laughs> this is always the fun thing. Okay, that'll do. Uh, I still have 8,000 notifications, but they're manageable. So if I say, <laughs> play my driving playlist, then it knows actually that it should be playing this from Apple Music. Um, and it also has Maybe You Want It, and there, there is a couple of other options there. Um, but... When you do this, it's going to ask you every so often which service you meant. I found this is really annoying when I'm driving because I'm always there going, it's Apple Music. Come on. I have an Apple Music subscription. I don't have any other music apps installed. Like, I don't have Spotify or anything installed. Uh, so please just you know, let me uh, listen to the music that is exactly the same as the music I wanted yesterday when I connected my phone to the car for driving. Um, but um, it, it should pop up things like Spotify. It'll also pop up things like Audible and Overcast and other things. Of course, Audible is a sponsor of, uh, of Twit and indeed the show. Um, but um, they, you know, they, it's, it's nice to see that the audio options are expanding here. But mail and browser, well, Safari, you can change your default from some applications. So for example, if you prefer AirMail instead of the Mail app, then in settings under AirMail, you can set that as your default mail client. And if you prefer Firefox over Safari, then settings, Firefox, set as my default browser. But you can't do that with music. And I think part of this is because of the fact that, you know, people have multiple different applications that they use for multiple different purposes. So for example, if you have Sonos speakers, then you might use the Sonos application to play music some of the time because it's you're controlling all of your Sonos speakers as well. Um, but you know, maybe you have a Sonos at the office and at home you have AirPlay speakers um, or a HomePod or something. So you use that instead. So I think Apple uh, are perhaps recognizing that things are not always so cut and dried here. Um, and we've heard some interesting rumors about iOS 15, which we're going to have to talk about at some point, Micah, um, because uh, I'm really curious as to, to what some of these might possibly mean. Um, but it's it's going to be really interesting to see, uh, you know, where they bring this preferred option in and how how they how they play it basically. Because I found asking Siri to play my music nowadays is pretty much always picking Apple Music for me, um, which is great. But every so often it pops up the list and it's like, which one of these eight thousand theoretical audio applications <laughs> you have installed would you like to use? And it's, it, I mean, it's nearly always odd. Uh, it's nearly always music um, because most of the time, if I want to listen to a podcast or an audiobook, I'm going to open the specific app for that rather than uh, opening, uh, you know, hey searing it because that that of course you know leaves things open to interpretation. And my HomePod is about to say hello, I believe. <laughs> hmm. um, actually, I don't know which uh, iOS 15 rumors you're talking about. Oh, well, uh, so there's a rumor with iOS 15. So we already have uh, Do Not Disturb While Driving. And we also have the sleep mode, uh, both of which um, you can add buttons to your control center, she says, uh, popping that open. So in my control center, I have a, a car here and I also have a, a bed. Um, and uh, I can I can use both of those to signify that I'm driving or that I'm sleeping. And they both enable a kind of Do Not Disturb. The idea that we've been hearing floated by multiple different sources now is that iOS 15 is going to contain modes. So you can also have like working ah, or yes. working out and things like that. And it can do different things and it will allow different apps to respond to you. So this is kind of merging screen time and do not disturb um, with, I don't know if you had a Nokia back in the day, Micah. I have one of those Nokias with the, the flashing lights on the side. Um, and I love that phone. That was such a cool phone. It had different modes and it would like switch ringtones and volume levels and stuff depending on your mode. That was really cool. I loved it. Um, and uh, apparently we might be getting something similar in iOS 15. Of course, these are all rumors, all subject to change. We don't know anything until June 7th. So uh, we're going to have to wait until June 7th and then see what happens then. Yes, as usual, we've got to wait. 
Uh, but eventually we'll find, we'll find out. But yes, now I know now I know what feature you were talking about. That I when I first saw that I thought, oh, this is great because a lot of people were hacking. Um, yeah. Do not disturb while driving. So you know that it's clearly something that people definitely want. Uh, and then the last uh, feature before we take another break and come back with an unboxing. What is uh, what is this last feature here in uh, iOS fourteen point five? Well, the last feature in iOS 14.5 is reminder sort. So I'm just going to pop over and remind us on my iPhone for anyone on the video stream. So here I have a fancy shopping list in uh, in reminders. And I've just realized the cat food is still on here. And I've uh, the cat has unfortunately been adopted. I miss my foster kitty. Mm. Um, but... Uh, so you can you can rearrange items on this list by just sort of picking them up and then dragging them and dropping them. And you've been able to do that for ages. But if you tap on the three dots in the top right and then you go to sort by, we've got a few more options here than we used to have. It used to be title and deadline and that was it. But now you can change it to uh, sort by uh, title. You can also use uh, the created date um, and you can also use priority. So if I uh, flag a couple of items here, so I'm flagging, uh, iron tablets and leak. Um, so this is going to be an interesting shopping list. Um, but uh, if I sort by priority, then, uh, oh, it, sorry, it does not use the flag for that. You have to uh, tap into an item and then you set the priority. The flagging is separate. I remember that now. So if I put uh, jam, jam is a very high priority. So that's got three exclamation marks in front of it. And then uh, let's let's do something similar with buns. Buns can be medium priority. Uh, then this is now sorting by priority for me. So uh, because it, that that sort is enabled, if you tap into the, your sort options, then it gives you uh, lowest first and highest first. So now jam is above buns where I would expect it to be. And you can see which sort you're currently using. Um, and it defaults to manual for people who are not aware. Um, a manual is usually very similar to your creation date sort. Uh, it just means that you can drag and drop things, but usually when you add an item to reminders, it shows up at the bottom. This way you're going to be able to see things in a variety of different orders um, and it will hopefully make life a lot easier for you so that you can make sure that you, for example, actually get your shopping done. And apparently I really need jam and buns. <laughs> Um, we should also mention, uh, the, the other thing I, f I forgot to mention is Apple podcasts got, uh, a lot of, of updates to the app itself. Um, and then also there is a new feature that lets you, uh, do Apple podcast subscriptions. So, uh, not quite available at this point, but, um, apps will, or podcasts will be able to offer a subscription service within the Apple podcast app, but it has definitely been redesigned, uh, with some really cool, uh, visuals and improvements there. Um, Apple news got a bit of a redesign as well, a bit of a quick touch up, uh, to make it easier to find content and, and uh, check out new magazines, um, Apple, or I already, we already covered that one. And then 5G improvements. So for iPhone 12 models, um, you can get dual SIM support for 5G connectivity and some other enhancements to how uh, 5G works on the new iPhones, including battery improvements, which was a big thing that people were kind of talking about early on is my battery is not doing so hot because I've got 5G turned on. Uh, so this is much better and improved as well. Uh, so those are just some of the features that have come with iOS 14.5. And now let me take a quick break before we come back with an AirTags unboxing. Folks, take a deep breath in and let it out. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by Headspace. So you've probably tried meditation before and maybe it didn't work, right? Or maybe you felt like you were doing it wrong. Well, if mental health is part of your self-care plan this year, you owe it to yourself to try Headspace because if you felt like you were doing it wrong or it just wasn't working for you, Headspace is a great way to learn how to meditate properly and how meditation for everybody is kind of an individual thing. Uh, there are lots of different types of, of content that you can use to help you relieve stress, to uh, go through guided meditations, et cetera, because Headspace is the daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations in an easy-to-use app. 
And this is pretty cool. Um, Headspace said, look, we want to be able to give some real data, some real stats about what using Headspace uh, does for you, how it can improve things for you. And so they decided to get clinically validated research done. It's the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. So whatever the situation, Headspace really can truly help you feel better. If you're overwhelmed, well, Headspace has a three-minute, and I mean, who isn't overwhelmed right now? You can check out the three-minute SOS meditation for you. Uh, if you need some help falling asleep, well, Headspace has wind-down sessions their members swear by. And for parents, Headspace even has morning meditations you can do with your kids so you can start them early on that meditation journey. Headspace's approach to mindfulness can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, and increase your overall sense of well-being. For a mood-boosting workout, check out Headspace Move. Just 30 days of head... This is, this is where things get really cool uh, to actually have these percentages, to actually have these statistics. Just 30 days of Headspace lowers stress by 32%. And just four sessions can reduce burnout by 14%. Burnout, that is one of those words that we're all afraid of and all facing for sure. 14% reduction in burnout. Um, of course, Headspace uh, is offered us uh, a chance to check it out. And we've all uh, here at Twit had the opportunity to, uh, to give it a go. And there are so many different options. I think that's one of the best parts about it. But my favorite section is certainly the sleeping section because there are different types. There are sleep casts, which are these uh, kind of podcasts. Think of them like podcasts, these little uh, storytelling uh, segments that have really soothing voices. There's uh, the guide to sleep, which gives you some advice on what you should be doing. Wind downs, which are the things that you do kind of right before you go to bed. It helps you get in the mode for sleep, which is a very important thing. If, you, if you're not sort of mentally prepared for sleep, then you might struggle a little bit here. Uh, plus a really nice one called Nighttime SOS. And this is for folks look here at the titles. After a nightmare, work stress, pain at night, mental chatter, racing mind, these different SOSs help you uh, if you end up waking up in the middle of the night and then you, you, know, you just had a nightmare, this will help you kind of pull yourself out from that nightmare or uh, deal with unresolved work stress that may have woken you up in the middle of the night, um, you know, like not being able to pre-order an iPad Pro whenever you think it should be time. Uh, maybe a little bit of a work stress wind down uh, or nighttime SOS would be helpful. So as a person who is all about uh, sleep and, and, you know, understanding how sleep is helpful to the body, I love that section of the app, but there's so much there besides just sleep. There's like I said, meditation and uh, mindfulness and all sorts of things that you can check out. And this is really cool. Headspace is backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews. And as if that number wasn't big enough, more than 60 million downloads, folks. Headspace makes it easy for you to build a life-changing meditation practice with mindfulness that works for you on your schedule, anytime, anywhere. You deserve to feel happier. And Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash iOS today. That's headspace.com slash iOS today for a free one month trial. And this is a trial that gets you access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now. So you don't want to miss out on it. Just go to headspace.com slash iOS today, today to check it out. One month of mindfulness and meditation that can literally and proven to change your life. Thank you so much to Headspace for sponsoring this week's episode of iOS Today and for helping me get a good night's sleep so I can do this show. Uh, every Friday morning. We appreciate you. All righty, folks, it's time. Rosemary Orchard over in the UK has better access to packages coming in the mail uh, because it's later there. And so she is bragging to me. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Rosemary Orchard, you've got air tags in your hands. Tell us about it. Unbox whatever you whatever you're ready to do. I'm excited, folks. This is a live unboxing right here on iOS today. We're doing it live. Take it away. 
Well, uh, so this is the first time I'm, I'm doing an unboxing on camera. So I apologize for the camera angle. This is all I could rig up on short notice. But uh, the, the air tags have come. And uh, so I bought two packs of four air tags to start with. Um, and they shipped separately for whatever reason. But they shipped in this, this box. And this is just something I want to mention really quickly, that Apple seemed to have changed most of their boxes for iPhones, Apple Watches, um, and small devices to something like this, where instead of things being, you know, like individually shrink wrapped with loads of packaging, they just have this like folding cardboard system with a piece of plastic on top, which they then fold down and pin your, your air tags into place with, um, or whatever it is. So, uh, so, so I have a four pack of air tags right here, and I'm just going to throw that cardboard box on the floor over there um, and I'll, I'll deal with that later. Um, so, you know, this this is the AirTags. Uh, I also, uh, full disclosure, uh, have right here, I have my AirPods Pro. I have uh, the, the tag holders that I bought last week and I have a Tile Pro and uh, I have a couple of different cases here. So I've got three of the Balkans, two of them are actually for my parents. So I'll pop those to one side and then I've got a, a pink one for me and an Apple leather loop. So let's let's dive in. There is, uh, as always, this tiny little tag that you can uh, tear off and it allows you to get into things without a knife. Though I see Apple have once again managed to slightly miss with the glue and make it a little trickier for me. <laughs> uh, but here we go. I have AirTags. Look, it says AirTag on there, right? Right there. Uh, it's it's shiny. And uh, something, a little Easter egg for people who, who aren't... Uh, uh, following the news as avidly as Michael or myself might be. Uh, on the bottom of the box yes, uh, down here, this this it's really difficult to see. It says 2020 Apple Inc. So these have clearly been around for a while. Now on my leather loop, this also, or the, the leather um, key ring, it also says 2020. Apparently some of these say 2019 on. So these have been ready for a while. Uh, so I'm not surprised that I managed to get mine today. And hopefully, Mikey, yours should arrive momentarily. Okay, so I've unfolded my air tags and I have four air tags right here. They're all metal shiny side up. So they're they're facing me with the Apple logo and the plastic side is uh, facing down. It says update to the latest iOS or iPad OS and turn on Bluetooth. Pull tab when ready to use. So I'm gonna pick up my iPhone and unlock it. Um and uh okay, so I'm just going to uh to uh switch to uh another screen here. Oops, and uh let's uh just Pop shortcuts there. There we go. So now I can show you. I've got my screen ready. I'm going to uh, open up one of these air tags and I'm just going to uh, peel off this plastic. So you go around it with the plastic. It's really cute. I really like it. It's like a little smarty or something. Smarties over yeah. here filled with chocolate, by the way. Oh, um, really? Not, yeah. Uh, what are they, uh, made, is it like a candy coating on the outside? Yeah. Yeah. Candy coating okay. on the outside, chocolate inside. Okay. So it's come up. It says air tag connect. So I'm going to tap connect. Um, Wait, and I'm, I'm really gonna... pa let's pause really quick. It came up. Yeah. Did you have to push anything? Oh, you pulled the tab nope. that, that connected the I pulled the, battery, the tab right? out of my, my, my air tag right here. Um, and so there was a little, there was a little bit of plastic. It's going to be really hard to see because it's translucent. Um, so I'll, I'll try and show it on my and finger there. That's, that that's was wedged between the battery and the connectors. So upon pulling yeah. that tab, then it, okay, gotcha. Yeah. 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 So, and the, it just pops up on my phone. Okay. This is great. Uh, so I'm just going to scroll out. I'm going to say this one's on my keys. Uh, and that's, that's me and my information. So I'll just scroll forwards there and it says it's setting up. Okay. So while it does this, I'm going to try out the Spigen Valentinus AirTag holder that I got last week. All right. Well, it seems to have found me. So that's a good start. So I'm just going to slide this AirTag in right here. and That, that fits. Nice. There, there's no problems. Okay, it's it's a little little misaligned here at the bottom. Uh, I keep forgetting that I flipped my camera at 180 degrees, so it's a little misaligned uh, here. So there's a little bit of white that I'm I'm seeing, but that that could also just be tolerances with the leather. Um, so let's just pop that one back out a second, and uh, let's just uh, oops, there we go. Uh, switch back. Okay, so it's because it's so slippery, it's kind of tricky to get out. So this is the other AirTag holder that I got from Amazon. It looks really like that Apple loop to put on bags. So yep. I'm just going to try sliding it in there. And yeah, that one fits too. No problem. Nice. So it's good. Great. Yeah. Okay. So it turns out everybody was right guesstimating the, these dimensions. So let's just do a little comparison right here with uh, my Tile Pro. Uh, that I took off my keys because it was out of battery and I needed to replace it. So it's definitely quite a bit smaller. Uh, I also have the 3D printed one that I did last week uh, for comparison <laughs> here. 
that that, that seems one really pretty looks accurate, like a smarty. actually. Yeah, yeah, that does. Uh, but yeah, this is a lot smaller. So this is good. So uh, I'm just going to switch to the uh, find my app on my iPhone and uh, zoom out a little bit so that I can show everybody. So now in the find my app on my phone, it says my keys are with me. Okay, that's good. I would get up and put this somewhere else, but we're doing a live podcast and me just randomly wandering off in the middle might make some people upset. Throwing them. <laughs> um, <laughs> so instead, I am going to try and play a sound. That's that's pretty loud. I, I'm I'm pleased with that. I, I found I found them. Yeah, that's good. It's it's a solid, you know, it's a solid loud sound. I could hear that through pretty good at pretty good uh, headphones as well here that are, they're not noise canceling because I need to be able to hear if something else is happening while I'm podcasting. Um, you know, it's always good to be able to hear a smoke alarm or something. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So let's just take a look at this, this Apple leather loop uh, or leather keychain because this one is very similar to the Spidge and Valentinus. Okay. The difference in price though, is that the Spidge and Valentinus is like 16 bucks. Um, and, uh, and then the, the, uh, the the Apple one is like 30 bucks plus or 40 bucks, including tax for a lot of people. So I'm just going to pop this cardboard over to the side. And uh, again, this, this works in the same way in that there's a popper um, and you open up the popper and uh, then, and then you can slide it in this, this one goes all the way through though, which is quite nice. So you can just slide that in there. I will say this, this is lighter than, than the Spigen one and the, the Spigen one feels a little bit more uh, harder, if that makes sense. Um, mm, it's, it's yeah. Not it's as not as supple. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think like Apple are using a thinner, higher quality leather, leather, which is quite nice. So let's just take a look at the the Belkin option here, um, because the Belkin option is of course the budget option. Uh, Apple have uh, filed, farmed out the creation of that. So I can already see a problem with this, and that's I have nice nail polish that I got done earlier this week, and I'm going to have to open up this keyring myself. Um, and that's going to ruin my nails. So I'm going to have to like go find some keys after the show to do that. So for the time being, I'm just going to pop this out. Oh, there we go. The, you can tell the difference between Belkin and Apple with the packaging, right? Uh, yes. You know, the, 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 the Apple stuff is just, it's cardboard and it just slides and it's nice and easy. Oh, that's pretty nice actually. So um, a little feature that I've just found is the, the, the back of um, the, the uh, the the Apple key ring leather loop uh, fits perfectly around the metal. So when I'm trying to get it off, like I'm having to like push it. This like this is just oh, not going to go. Like one side is pulling out, but that means that if if the popper opens, it's not just going to slide out if it's properly seated. That is a nice feature. I'm I'm liking that. Um, so uh, let's just pop that one over to one side, and then uh, I don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way to pop this in here. So I'm just gonna pop it in, I guess. And um, so you, you put it in and then I guess you just lock it into place. Um, I'm not quite sure how. There's supposed to be some kind of alignment things. All right. Okay. So I pop it on. The arrows are the wrong way around. Okay. Thanks, Belkin. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this this seems to do the same sort of thing with the, the fitting um, here around uh, the metal. Uh, my, my Apple logo is uh, lopsided. I apologize to everybody. Um, but uh, I have to say, now this is in here. Like, it's not going to come out. I don't need to put the key ring in to hold that in place, which is something I was a little concerned about when looking online. Uh, also, I don't know if I can actually get this back out without ruining my nails. So I might just have to leave this AirTag in this holder for now. <laughs> um, and I'll sort that out later slash another time. Um, and it has got some little grooves on it uh, to to uh, help you line things up. Um, so I'm just going to try and see. There we go. Maybe. Nope. Nope. That That is solid. All right. Oh, um, we we. We do have a request from Burke uh, here. Burke's one of the, the lovely people at Twitter. He wants me to throw this across the room. Uh, what, what do people in the Discord and in the IRC think? Should I should I toss it across? Do the you room? have like a Do you or have like a sock it? or something you can put it inside of before you throw it? I'm sure it would nope, be fine, nope. but I just feel uh, I feel uh, nervous about it. Okay, maybe you can like uh, no, slide it across the room. <laughs> Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to do a drop test. So I've got a little blanket on my left to help keep me warm. So this is going to help keep it safe. So. It's fine. It didn't break. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, thank, thank you to the people in the Discord saying don't zoom in on the maps. There's a reason why I stopped showing my iPhone for a little while and then started showing it again. It was so I could zoom out on the maps. Uh, but yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going to try this, people. Uh, for, for science and for Twit. Oh, man. 
it, it went, so I have carpet on my floor to be clear. Uh, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a like tile Tyler floor floors. or something. Uh, and I threw it, it's over by the door. I didn't throw it very far, like maybe six feet or so. And uh, it's fine. It was, it wasn't a, an AirTex holder, but as, as we've established, these things have got holes in them. So you can like, you know, the AirTag is pretty much exposed. But so I, now can I've you show AirTags. us the, can you show us the arrow thing in the Find My app since you've kind yeah, of tossed so it Yeah, so I, I, I have not done this yet. So I'm just going to quickly try it. Um, okay. So uh, there we go. So let's, let's pop that open. So it says my keys are about six feet away. So that was a good guess. And um and uh, there we go. And I pointed them in the right direction. I can actually see my air tag, so I don't need to do this. But uh, it's it's showing me uh, now where I need to go. Um, so it's six foot behind me or uh, six foot to my left or dead ahead. And it goes green nice. when it's dead ahead. I love it. Um, so uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, and of course, from here, I can I can make it make a sound um, or... Uh, or and uh, there's like a, a nice blur in the background of the camera kind of seeing... The, the space, which is yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. I put this back near my XLR interface and it's it's not happy again. Oh, it needs more light. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Okay, so it is using the camera properly there to 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 identify things. That that is pretty cool. I'm I'm liking this Mica. I think it's I think my my tiles they, they needed the battery replacing. Um but uh yeah it, now they're getting they're, replaced. They're not getting yeah yeah they're just, <laughs> I'm just gonna straight up replace them. <laughs> very cool very cool um well i will maybe have my air tags later today uh and be Cross able to try them out you. as well thank you i've got uh i think i i got the apple loop so the the i know you got the third party version i got the uh, first party version of the the kind of silicone loop and then um some of the Belkin ones that have like the nylon strand on them. So we'll see mm -hmm. uh, how well those work with it. Uh, it's interesting to see kind of the difference between Apple's first party, what they kind of expect for the the fitting versus the third parties. But it's good that those third parties got it pretty accurate. Uh, it was just slightly off. That's good. Um, all yeah. right. Let us move on to the next segment, which is Shortcuts Corner. We have music for Shortcuts Corner. Yay! This, folks, is the new music for Shortcuts Corner. That's right. I commissioned uh, some, some music for Shortcuts Corner. Uh, we will continue to improve upon that uh, in future episodes. Uh, the, not the music <laughs> itself, but sort of the intro to Shortcuts Corner. Because I was watching, uh, I'll be honest, I was watching all about Android and they have really fun sort of interstitials between the different segments of the show. I was a little jealous. And so I'm uh, slowly but surely trying to work that into our show too. And what better a segment than Rosemary Orchard Shortcuts Corner to be the first one to get that, uh, that intro. So now it is time, Rosemary. Tell me uh, what you've got for us. Well, we, we have a challenge today, a challenge from a lovely person called Webb who, who's written to us. Uh, and he, uh, I believe uh, Webb is a he, uh, said he's enjoying and learning with the content that we deliver each week and many thanks. Um, so Webb says, I use shortcuts on my iPhone to play music on my HomePod. Each shortcut first switches the audio to the HomePod and then plays for 30 minutes. At this point, the audio output is pointing to the HomePod. I have two other shortcuts that point the audio to either the headphones connected to the lightning port or the iPhone. The problem is if you don't run the point to headphones short, the problem is if you run the point to headphone shortcut and the headphones are not connected to the iPhone, iOS returns an error. The, the, the converse, I believe reverse, happens when running the point iPhone point to iPhone if headphones are connected. I would like to include an if statement in the play music shortcut so that when music stops, the iPhone audio will automatically be switched to the iPhone if there are no headphones connected or to the headphones if they are connected. I've not been able to find a way to test for the presence of headphones. Well, this is a challenge web and I'm really glad he sent this in because it's not something you can do with just straight shortcuts. Uh, as much as I would love to just, you know, say shortcuts can do it. Shortcuts is pretty good, but it's occasionally missing the odd feature. So, um, you are probably going to be looking for an 
application that can help you with this. And there are lots of applications out there which do lots of cool things with shortcuts. So we, last week we talked about Pushcut a little bit. Um, thanks to Taylor who, who asked us a question in the Discord. Well, today I'm not going to be talking about Pushcut. I'm talking about an app called Toolbox Pro. And Toolbox Pro has a Love few it. actions which could really help you here. So first of all, there is a shortcut, an action for is audio playing, which is something that people might need at times. But there's another one for get audio output. And when I add this, it says get details about current audio output device. So if I run this right now, then it says system capture. And that's because my iPhone is plugged in right here. It's plugged into the Mac so that I can actually capture it and share this information to uh, all of you so that anybody watching the video can actually see this. So this action will get this. And so what you're going to need to do, uh, Web, is you're going to want to plug in your headphones and run this um, and see what it says, and then unplug your headphones and run this and see what it says and connect it to different things. Now, bearing in mind, airplaying music is not the same as your audio output. So what you need to bear in mind is uh, iOS and actually macOS um, has different options for audio output versus music output. A music output can go to one source while audio goes to another. So if you think of it this way, um, it, when, when you get uh, a message, it doesn't just play in your ears with your AirPods. It also, if your phone is locked, will buzz your Apple Watch to let you know. Um, and so that that's what you need to be a little bit aware of with this. But... Toolbox Pro is going to be the app that can, can help you out here. So Toolbox Pro is actually free to download. Um, and uh, this action, I believe, is not one of the pro actions that requires you to, to get the, the in-app purchase for that. So give that a try and see if that helps. Now, I just want to do a little bit of a background for people who don't know about sending audio to other uh, places. So what you can do, if and I'm just going to search for audio in the actions here, um, is... There's, there's two options, okay? You can set your playback destination or you can hand off playback. So if I set my playback destination, then I can set it to my iPhone or I can set it to any of the different speakers that I have available. And I'm, I'm not quite sure why this is flashing. I'm sorry if that's distracting on video. Um, uh, but I can set it to, say, my bedroom HomePod Mini or I can set it to my living room HomePod or something else. Now, if you also have something like your AirPods, uh, then you can, hopefully, uh, she says doing this uh, live on air for testing and holding it in her hand, then you can also set it to your AirPods. So um, my AirPods Pro are right there and uh, that's set. So I believe this is the action web is using right there. There is also handoff though, where you can choose to hand off playback and you can specify that playback should be handed off from say your iPhone to uh, a specific, uh, that, that's my living room, Apple TV. Um, so you can you can actually do that. And that just means that it goes there. You can still grab it and control it, uh, but the actual playback and everything is being handled by that device. So uh, there we go. That's, that's how you can uh, do, uh, hopefully how you can handle this web. And uh, fingers crossed it works. Please get back to us and let us know. I always like to know whether or not people uh, have actually solved their problems by writing to us here in Shortcuts Corner. And uh, so, yeah, there we go. Toolbox Pro is one of my favorite apps. I think it's so great, all the little things that are built into it. I yeah, use it all the yeah. time to um, make sure that the to, uh, before I open um, an app, it not, not every app, but before I open apps where I uh, am worried about ad tracking across different sites, I make sure it, it checks if the VPN is turned on. And mm -hmm. um, I, that's not something that's built in uh, to the, the Shortcuts app uh, by default. So with um, Toolbox, I can do that. And I think Toolbox is awesome. It rocks. Yeah. All it right. Does. A little bit of feedback we have from Brian. Brian writes in, Dear Micah and Rosemary, I purchased an Eero router system per your recommendation. It's working fine, but I have two questions. My teenager bypasses the scheduled timer by renaming his Mac, then logging in after the scheduled time. I am now unplugging the router at night. Is there a way to prevent this? And if not, could I use a smart plug to schedule the power to the router to turn it off during the night? So, Brian, um, I'm sorry that you are... Uh, 
dealing with that, that that's something that you're dealing with. I have to tell you, I am the slightest bit conflicted because mayhaps I am closer to uh, being a teen than you are, uh, given that you are, you know, a parent of a teen. Um, that's not necessarily, you know, uh, the case, but because of that, I've got a little bit of my feels. I'm like, oh man, if I was a teen and wasn't able to access the internet, that would kind of be a bummer. So I'm a little conflicted, but I promise we'll, we'll give you the best advice we can. Um, basically, I, I the, the problem that I'm seeing here is you've got uh, a clever teen because yeah. renaming, um, your Mac is not something that is just off the top, a quick thing that you can, you know, that you just, people just know how to do. It's not where you would expect it on the Mac. Uh, you launch system preferences and you choose sharing of all things instead of, um, instead of, I don't know, like Wi-Fi or network settings. And in sharing, you rename the Mac to something new. Um, that is a, you know, an issue within the uh, Eero app itself, as far as I'm concerned, because it uh, does the blocking based on the um, the sort of name that it, the host name that's sent over the network, as opposed to the MAC address. And the reason why uh, this is this is done that way is because uh, many modern devices have something called uh, private mode or privacy mode or some version of that where the MAC address actually changes so that a device can't be tracked on a network. And for all for my home network, I actually have uh, that turned off, that MAC address privacy thing, because on my network, I want to be able to know which device is which and be able to uh, make adjustments depending on what that is. So that is why uh, Eero uses the host name instead, because it's more consistent. But your team has figured out how to um, how to turn this off uh, by changing the, the, you know, the name of the Mac. So given that you have a clever teen, um, I, I, you know, I'm hesitant with the, uh, power schedule, uh, to, to answer your first question, is there a way to prevent this not built in with the Eero, uh, system? It, that simply is not, uh, how the Eero mm -hmm. system works. Um, as far as using a smart plug to schedule power to the router, you're going to run into a bit of an issue here because the smart plug <laughs> is a Wi-Fi device. Off. <laughs> so yeah, you'll be able to turn it off, but turning it back on is not a default. So here's what I'm going to recommend. And it feels very strange to recommend this because it's so old school. But back in the day, uh, before we had smart plugs and everybody had holiday lights that they wanted to set up, uh, I can remember my great grandparents having like three of these in their house. There are manual um, mm -hmm. scheduled plugs that you can buy, and they have like these little these little uh, grab and, and adjust dials on them. And so you can basically set a power schedule and say, after this time, I want you to turn off the power, and after this time, I want you to turn on the power. So it's smart. But in the in a, in a uh, sort of before time sense, where it's not it's not that it's connected to the internet. In fact, it's not at all. Uh, instead, you would just use it to set a schedule manually, and then it could turn off and turn back on again. But yes, if you tried to do this with a smart plug, my concern is that it's not going to work. Because and here's the thing: is that technically, the only limitation to something like that working should be sort of the built-in memory that's inside of the plug. There's no reason why if this thing doesn't have internet, it shouldn't be able to turn on or off. But oftentimes, anytime a smart device loses internet connection, it kind of just goes, oh, I, oh, I've been overcome by the vapors and falls out on its fainting couch mm -hmm. and is like, I can't do anything until you fix the Wi-Fi issue. And part of that, again, is because of memory constraints. So I don't know personally of any smart plug that has um, scheduling features that don't require network access as well of some sort. Um, they all require some sort of network access to be able to, to work. So yeah, Rosemary, uh, other than the manual timer, can you think of anything? Because yeah. if, you, so, if you had a different router, it would be okay, but the Eero yeah. router, yeah. 
Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So so because because the Euro Raptor is is doing the smart thing, just to be clear, it is doing the logical thing here because it was built by pre- former Apple engineers. They know how this stuff works. Um, so so a mechanical timer is probably going to be your best bet. But I, I would like to throw in a couple of notes of caution. Uh, number one, uh, it, it is, of course, going to kill internet for everybody at this time, not just your son uh, or your teenager. Sorry, you didn't specify. Uh, oh, it says renaming his Mac, so I'm going to guess. Um, but um, it, it's going to kill internet or Wi-Fi at the very least for everybody. And number two, these usually have a manual override on them. Okay. And I'm just thinking, if your teenager is smart, smart enough to go, to know that the, the, by renaming uh, his his Mac uh, that he can get around this problem, he's probably also going to be smart enough to sneak downstairs or wherever the right. router is and, and slide that switch. Just like, I'm going to be honest here, I'm guessing that he's probably waiting until you've gone to bed, sneaking downstairs, plugging the router in, using the Wi-Fi, sneaking back downstairs early in the morning, and then unplugging it um, again so that you don't know. Um, so, you know, you're going to have to probably sit down and have a conversation with your teen about this. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> it, it's it's going to be difficult. There are lots of different solutions out there. There's things like the the circle system. There's all sorts of different things. Um, but, it, you know, none of them are foolproof because all of them are designed with the the idea of you know parents having conversations with with their with their children about this stuff um and them understanding you know the pros and the cons um and honestly most systems will work based on the host name because otherwise you know you can in the network settings of the mac uh change it so that it doesn't and and same on the iphone change it so that it doesn't change the MAC address every time it connects to the network. So it's always the same MAC address. But that's that's a checkbox. If 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 somebody can figure out how to change the the host name, they can also figure out how to change um, you know, that setting back on um or manually change the MAC address. Mm-hmm. That's possible as well. Um, so so there's plenty, plenty of different tricky things that you can do. Something you might think about, um, which is probably going overboard is setting the DNS to a custom DNS address and then having that DNS address blocked at that specific time. So I say this because I use um, a system called Pi-hole to block ads on my network at home. Now, it doesn't work for stuff like Instagram and YouTube, but it does work for websites like Mac Rumors, for example, um, where, where those ads are then blocked. Um, and if I turned my Pi-hole off and that was my only DNS entry, then the internet just wouldn't work. The network would still be up. Um, but, you know, he would then just have to figure out that he's just changing the DNS address on his computer. And let's be honest, teens talk. They all talk to each other. That's how he knows to change the sharing name of his of his computer to something else. Um, so, you know, if, he, if that stops working, he's going to talk to his friends and he's going to find another workaround. Um, but, uh, it, it's, you know, it's going to be tricky, whatever you do. So best of luck with that. Uh, so there are a couple of, of suggestions that folks have come up with in the, the chat. Uh, Matt R talked about a device called circle, um, which again, at first I was like, well, then just a change to the host name or using a private Mac would, would circumvent this. But with circle, you can basically say everything is blocked except for the things that I put on this list. and so. Though you know the the parents Mac and the uh, the smart plugs and whatever could go on that list, and so after X time, if you're not on this list, then you get blocked. So even if they change the host name to something else, you wouldn't be able to access the internet. Um, the other the other suggestion was um, having multiple SSIDs uh, for somebody who's going, what in the world is an SSID? Uh, a Wi-Fi router, the name that you give it, uh, the network name that you give it is the SSID. And so uh, sometimes people will have a router that has a 2.4 gigahertz and a 5 gigahertz channel, and they might be named two different things. Um, I've got like four different SSIDs for different reasons. And so you could give the kid their own SSID, like the guest network, for example, and give access to that one. And then after a period of time, cut it off. And as long as they don't have the password for the, uh, you know, the, the main network and not just the guest network, then they wouldn't be able to access the internet. Um, and so again, there are always going to be workarounds with any of this. And the fact is, I think that 
a, a conversation about things and um, perhaps more so uh, just this is why we're not doing internet after this period of time. And this is why this rule is in place. And this is why uh, paired with uh, some deterrent would probably be helpful. Um, in any case, Brian, uh, I wish you the best of luck on uh, figuring this out. And if you do if you do choose one of these uh, ideas that we've shared and uh, one of them works for you, let us know. We'd love to hear back from you. Okay, folks, let us move on to our last segment of the show, up next, our app caps. And now it's time for our app caps. Alrighty, folks, it's time for the app segment, the app cap segment. This is the part of the show where we wear silly or some, well, sometimes not silly, sometimes serious caps uh, to honor our picks of the week. Uh, in this week, it is the apps that either we've used for a long time and we want to share with you all our new apps we've come across that are exciting that we think you should know about. In any case, we're wearing caps for the app cap. And uh, Rosemary Orchard, tell us about the cap you've chosen and then tell us about the app you've picked. Well, this is this is a hat I have worn before. It is a, a sparkly silver uh, with a black brim, sort of not quite top hat-ish. Um, and uh, it's got silver sequins around the brim just to make it extra fun um, because, you know, we're jazzy when it comes to the app caps. Though my app cap this week is not a jazzy app. It is a functional app. So I've recently been having some problems with some of my plants. So here I have uh, a succulent that I picked up in Ikea. It's quite cheap. And you can see that a certain foster kitty has previously discovered the plants could be edible and uh, had a good old chew at it. And it's had some dead leaves and stuff. And so I've basically just been trying to look after my plants better. And on my last trip to Ikea, I picked up an orchid and they are somewhat fussy as far as plants go. So I decided I need a little help here. And for this, I downloaded a great app called Planta. Planta is spelled P-L-A-N-T-A. -A, um, and its, it's tagline is keep your plants alive. Uh, well, I, I love the fact that it keeps my plants alive because I'm not doing a very good job of it myself. I also have a flamingo flower, um, which has got some dead leaves. Um, and then I have my moth orchid as well. So what happens with, with your plants is you can actually have multiple different rooms to start with. Um, so uh, you can see I have my kitchen and my living room, and there's also this magic section here called a plant hospital, which I'll get to in a moment. But uh, in my living room, I could go ahead and add another plant. And there's all sorts of options, including ident identifying by picture. So I'm going to try and scan um, from my camera right here, and I need to grant plant access to it. But there we go. So I've taken a photo of this succulent and uh, it's going to go ahead and try to identify it for me. And it's done it. It is indeed a molded wax. It is that kind nice. of succulent. Um, so it does this. Um, and it's really cool. Um, so uh, there we go. It's apparently an easy to look after plant. It's recommended for my living room where there's lots of light. So when I added that room, um, it was the middle of the day. It asked me to point my camera at the window um, so it could judge how much light there was in the room. So here we go. I have my plant. It tells me it's easy to look after. It likes full sun, low amount of water uh, required. Um, it's suitable for a living room. You water it approximately every 18th day uh, and you're supposed to let the soil dry up and fertilize it every 37th day. All right. You don't need to mist the plant. It can handle dry air. You don't need to clean it. It likes sun, ideal temperatures, uh, in, in winter and in summer. Um, and this is degrees Celsius, by the way. So that's 18 degrees Celsius in winter, 10 to 18 in winter and 15 to 30 in summer. It's not going to survive if it gets super cold outside, if it goes below freezing, uh, but it's good indoors all year round, basically. And uh, you're supposed to repot these every year. Whoops. Well, I'll, I have to make a note of that one. Um, so this is my molded wax. I'm going to go ahead and add this plant by just tapping that right there. And no, it's not been repotted. And I'm going to keep this current picture. So that's the picture I use for identifying it. 
Um, and so now it's going to add this plant um, and uh, I am going to keep my picture private. So when you add a picture of a plant, it asks if it can share it with the community. Um, and uh, then, you know, if, if you say yes, then it will. And if you say no, then it won't. So, right. Now I can go back to my living room and here you can see I have a flamingo flower and my molded wax. So if I tap into it, then uh, I can I can tap on the plus and I can say that I have watered it um, and that that is complete. And it tells me the best way of watering things as well. Um, and apparently it's too sunny for, for my flamingo plant. Now, of course, it's judging it based on the fact that I pointed my camera at the window. It's not aware of the fact that there's a little shelf uh, behind of which my flamingo plant is, sit is sitting. And also my flamingo plant is sick. And this is one of the reasons why oh, I got no. this app because my flamingo plant and my succulent here have both suffered from a certain uh, pesky feline or a frisky feline, as she liked to be called occasionally, um, from <laughs> chewing on things. Um, fortunately, I was very careful to make sure I did not have any plants that are poisonous to cats because cats like to eat plants, including those not good for them. And uh, fortunately, she didn't, didn't really chew on them that much. It was mostly, she tried to sleep in the flamingo plant. I don't understand <laughs> that. Um, but anyway, she, she was a lot bigger than the plant. It didn't go very well. Um <laughs> But uh, I can see now what I need to do. And I actually watered all of my plants here today. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just uh, check that off. Um, and now I can see that my, my flamingo plant is sick. So I need to increase its humidity. So it's got some brown leaves. Personally, I think that this is from the weight of a relatively small, but let's say dense feline attempting to sit on it. Um, and uh, so so uh, there's some brown leaves. Basically, some of the leaves are dying off. Now, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, I've adjusted it. I've made sure it's got plenty of water and everything as per the instructions here. But it suggested that I missed it when I requested some help earlier today. So I'm going to say that I, I've missed it, it and uh, it's still marked as sick. But underneath, uh, you know, my plants, I have I have my two sides, but I can also go ahead and, and look for different kinds of plants. I can discover things. So I could find out about this Swiss cheese plant. Okay, that's what everybody had in their offices at work. It's not recommended for me though, because it needs partial sunlight and I've got pretty sunny rooms. Okay, that's good to know. So I, I, I shouldn't bother with that. Oh, how about a jade plant? I've also known these as money plants, by the way. Uh, they are indeed toxic. Okay, they're, they're pretty easy to look after. I should get one of those. Um, so I, I really like this um, because, you know, it tells you what you need to do. And in four days, I need to uh, uh, do some, some watering by the looks of it. And then in seven days, I need to do some more stuff, including uh, fertilizing one plant. It wants me to fertilize my orchid and my flamingo flower. Uh, and then uh, in May, uh, I've got some more tasks to do. And you can see I've actually added this plant twice uh, now, but that's okay. And um, so, you know, it's it's a pretty nice app. It's pretty, uh, it's simple to use. It's easy. Um, it has this whole different network of things behind it. Some of the stuff is behind a premium feature, um, which is around about, I believe, uh, eight to ten dollars a month. Um, and uh, I can't, I can't remember the exact pricing, uh, but uh, I will just double check that right now uh, to make sure that I can tell people because it's seven ninety nine or seven forty nine over here in the UK. Um, so if I just scroll down and double check, that is seven ninety nine in the US. Uh, so it's seven dollars ninety nine a month, or you can you can pay for it yearly uh, if you want, or in a three month bundle. If say you're just getting to know your your plants and you you've got a little bit of a problem with some of them, um, you know, then you can uh, make the most of say a one month or a three month subscription. Um, to to get some extra help. And then once you've got your help and you're just maintaining things because everything's on the road, then you can go back to using the free version. Though, of course, if you do love an app, it's worth paying for. So uh, yeah, that's Planta. Keep your plants alive. So hopefully my succulent and I will be doing well next week. That is fantastic. I, I love that. Um, I am wearing a chef's hat today. And it is a delightful chef's hat. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you about an app that's been around for a while, uh, but just recently launched its 4.0 version. And with it, 
comes a really cool feature. This app is called One Blocker. And if you uh, have ever used a content blocker on iOS before, this is one of those. It's also available on Mac OS, iPad OS, etc. Uh, and it lets you block web trackers and ads as you so choose. And it does this. So one of the important things to understand about content blockers is they work a little bit different from the classic ad blockers that we've known from, you know, if you've been a Firefox or Chrome user for a long time, you've maybe used Adblock Plus. And with those, a lot of times those apps are designed to, those services, those, those uh, plugins, those extensions are designed to kind of hide portions of the page that you don't want to see. But to actually... When Safari first, uh, when Apple first announced the update to Safari for content blockers, uh, they introduced a technology that instead of just hiding those portions of the page, would block them entirely from loading. So when you go to a page and you block the content that you don't want, it loads faster and it loads without that portion of the page that you are not interested in seeing. Um, so content blockers are really uh, powerful and really good if you are you know, just as concerned about um, connectivity issues as you are about kind of keeping yourself safe and protected. But with OneBlocker 4.0, uh, they've announced a new feature called Firewall. And this is a really interesting feature. Uh, Firewall is a tool that lets you block in-app trackers. So along with when I launch Safari and I go to a site and I have my web tracker and my ad blocker turned on, then the site, the website is not able to load those portions of the page. But what about in apps? What if I'm just launching, you know, a, a a developer's app and I'm using it and you know playing around in it, the communication that it has with the internet is still going as is expected. So what if I want to block trackers within the app? And in in fact, one blocker says here in its uh, page, an average app has six trackers that transmit your behavior and information about your photos, your contacts, and even your location. Uh, yes, depending on the app, it's uh, getting metrics about how you use the app, if the app crashes, uh, what phone you're using the app with. And not all of this is nefarious. A lot of times it's so that the developer knows what their user base looks like. So if you've got a bunch of people using iPhone 12s and not a lot of people using an old iPhone 4, then you can start to develop for a more modern platform and know that you're not leaving a whole bunch of people behind. Or for some reason, the uh, my app keeps crashing and it's happening with folks that are running iOS 14.5 on iPhone 12, for example. So not always nefarious, but... If you're not interested in having that information tracked, you can enable this feature. And you can see here, um, I've turned on block in-app trackers. And it is, as I scroll down, you can see that these are all of the different sites that have tried to uh, pull information from my phone in the last uh, 45 minutes. So 19 minutes and 47 seconds ago, control.cochava.com, which is an app analytics uh, system, was looking to get some of that uh, data so that it could go back to whatever developer this app is connected to and use that information. And if I choose show more, you can see all of these different things. In fact, Coachava seems to be a popular one because there have been 94 requests blocked uh, just today alone. App-measurement.com has done 59 requests. Amazon's device-metrics-us, 22. And Yahoo, for some reason, is on there. Analytics.query.yahoo.com uh, has some stuff. And so you can see all of these different analytics Yesterday, app-measurement.com got 231 requests blogged. So it's if, if you're not interested in having uh, your metadata shared online, this is one of the first apps I've seen that will actually do this. Now, it's important to understand that this works a little different from the classic content blocker, which to uh, turn on a content blocker, uh, traditionally, you launch the settings app, you scroll down until you get to Safari, you scroll down until you get to content blockers, and then you turn on the content blockers that you want to use. With this, 
it actually installs as a VPN. So it's a little bit more involved. You have to type in your password. Uh, and so you do need to make sure that you feel comfortable with that app having that information. In this case, I trust the developers of OneBlocker. Um, they're you know, not sending any of that information to their own servers. And in fact, if they tried to, it would be blocked. Um, and so this is uh, something that you know I felt comfortable enacting on my uh, devices. And I've got it now on, on my iPad, on my iPhone, and uh, yeah, on all of these devices. And it's been really interesting seeing all the analytics that are constantly being pulled from my phone uh, over and over again. And now that information is blocked uh, on my device. So uh, one blocker you can download for free, but to get these premium features, including the firewall, $9.99 a year, um, which I think is a really good price uh, for 10 bucks a year, you can block this content. So yeah, check out one blocker in the app store for a way to protect your, um, your analytics data from being shared again. Not always nefarious. And if you want to support developers with their apps so that they understand, uh, you should feel comfortable doing that. Uh, but more so than anything, if I've, it was an educational thing for me. I did not realize there were that many requests going every single day, pulling information from my phone on how I use these apps. So uh, it was a really fascinating thing to see and kind of um, opened up my eyes to how much analytics day-to-day uh, -day are being pulled. So that takes you one step further than just the do not track uh, system in uh, iOS that's built in now. And yeah, thank you to OneBlocker for introducing this feature. I think it's really cool. All righty, folks, that brings us to the end of the show, which means I want to tell you about something. Uh, a very cool new thing we've launched here at Twitch. If you out there would like to have all of our shows ad-free, completely free of ads, you should check out Club Twit, which is available for seven bucks per month and gets you every Twitch show with no ads. Plus, you get access to an exclusive Twit Plus feed that has content uh, that you would not normally get before show, after show, behind the scenes, outtakes, and so much more. Uh, and, and some special content from the hosts as well. We're you know sharing that. And then my favorite feature, this is the reason why I've subscribed to other memberships, other sort of uh, club twit or or you know blank plus things, is because you get access to the members only Discord server. Uh, the members-only Discord server is a place where all of our uh, supporters or the supporters who've signed up for the Discord uh, can go and be a part of uh, the conversation there and hang out and talk about whatever. We've got channels for the shows that are live. We've got uh, channels for all of the different shows. We've got conversations around the different uh, different categories. And what's super cool, uh, we didn't do it today because it was a really long show today, but um, Leo has done this several times, has brought people kind of up on stage virtually to answer questions, to ask questions of the hosts and answer, have those answered there. Uh, and so we're planning on doing that in the future as well. Um, but again, just a really long show today. But I think that's the coolest part, honestly, of Club Twit. Seven bucks a month, no ads. Uh, you get the Twit Plus bonus feed. And again, you get uh, the members only Discord channel access or members only Discord server access. You just go to twit.tv slash club twit to learn more about that. Um, and Rosemary Orchard, if folks want to follow you online and check out all your great work, where do they go to do that? The best place is over at rosemaryorchard.com where you can find links to all the things I do, including this amazing podcast and a few others, um, as well as some books. Um, and of course, you can also follow me on micro.blog and Twitter with the username Rosemary Orchard. What about you, Micah? I am at Micah Sargent on pretty much all of the social media networks or as many as I can seem to find. Uh, or you can head to chihuahua.coffee, C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee, where I've got links to the places I exist most online. Um, thanks to those of you who tuned in live uh, by going to twit.tv slash live or hanging out with us in the, the Discord or an IRC. Uh, those are all great places to tune in every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific uh, to join us for the show live. But the best way to get the show so that you can get it as soon as it's available and uh, you know it's ready to go and, and, and good to listen to is by subscribing. And you do that by going to 
twit.tv slash iOS and subscribing in audio and video formats. Uh, we've got Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify. We are pretty much all the places where you are. So you can subscribe to the show in the format of your choice on those sites. Uh, until next time, I am Micah Sargent. That is Rosemary Orchard. And this has been iOS Today. Goodbye. Hey folks, I'm Ant Pruitt, host of Hands of Photography here on Twit TV. I know some of you have gotten yourself a brand new camera or you just had a camera sitting around and can't quite figure out how to get the most out of it. Well, I have a solution. My show, Hands on Photography. So subscribe right now to learn how to get the most out of that camera. I'm going to show you how to make those images pop. I don't care if it's a Canon camera. I don't care if it's a Sony, Nikon, iPhone, Android, even a inexpensive Android device. I got you covered. So head on over to twit.tv slash hop and subscribe today.